Formula One drivers react in just 0.2 seconds, while the average human has a reaction time of 0.5 seconds. So, if you were to race side-by-side -side with Max Verstappen today, he would be 32 feet ahead of you right after lights out, essentially putting you out of the competition. The legendary Michael Schumacher averages a remarkable 0.16 seconds at race starts, a performance level comparable to sprinters like Usain Bolt. Getting a strong lead at the start is a make-or-break situation in Formula One, and that's all about brain power and lightning-fast reflexes. In 2019, Valtteri Bottas had the best start ever in Formula One history during the Japanese Grand Prix, getting his car moving in only 0.04 seconds after the lights went out. People still insist it was pure luck. But Bottas had been training with iGym. It's a cognitive training software that looks like a video game with exercises such as pressing the spacebar as soon as something appears on the screen. Drivers also train quick reflexes with a Batak board, a device where random light buttons pop up, and the goal is to hit as many as possible in just 30 seconds. It's former Formula One champion Jensen Button who holds a world record in this exercise, smashing about two lights per second. As the lap goes on, drivers hit high-speed corners. Most Formula One circuits follow the clockwise direction, so when you take a right turn, the G-force tries to yank your head to the left. In a Formula One car, that means you're dealing with a force equivalent of about 88 pounds, practically trying to rip your head off. Drivers have to resist that force to be safe, so they try to keep their heads in a neutral position as much as they can. To prepare for that, Drivers go through massive neck training, using the help of a neck harness, a device where someone keeps pulling on the driver's head and he has to tense up to stop his head from moving forward or sideways. Some drivers prefer to use resistance bands or are trained by lying on their stomachs and hanging around 66 pounds of weight on their necks. An average human neck simply wouldn't survive sudden braking, crashes, or even standard racing conditions. While a man's neck measures around 15 inches, Formula One drivers have neck measurements similar to a middleweight boxer. Lewis Hamilton's collar size, for example, went from 14 inches in 2007 to an impressive 18 inches today. Another example is Fernando Alonso, who has a 17.7-inch neck. The physical effort needed to hit the accelerator or the brake of Formula One cars is unlike your experience in any other vehicle. We're here at the Singapore Grand Prix circuit, and what you're looking at is Turn 7, known as the highest braking point of the Formula One season. This turn is so intense that drivers feel the g-force almost five times greater than usual, a level of intensity compared to what the space shuttle experienced during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. So, for a driver weighing 150 pounds, like Fernando Alonso, it feels like being pushed into a seat with a sudden force of 750 pounds. Now, imagine just how much muscle power is needed to slow the car down in this situation. It's kind of like using just one leg to push against the weight of three baby elephants 62 times throughout the race. And I'm talking about just that one single corner. Without the leg strength of a fighter, you'd simply be unable to break the car and would end up flying off the track and over the safety barriers. The g-forces are a major factor in making breathing incredibly challenging during the race, so you'd need lungs as strong as those of a synchronized swimmer. Drivers spend around 70% of the lap in apnea, I mean, holding their breath. Lewis Hamilton secured pole position in the 2023 Hungarian Grand Prix after holding his breath for more than a minute, while the average person could last just over 30 seconds. Being breathless while driving at 200 miles per hour for nearly two hours demands top-notch cardiovascular fitness. The training routines vary based on the driver's preferences. Max Verstappen, for example, focuses on a lot of running while well, Valtteri Bottas is a fan of cycling. All right, drivers are in the final stretch of the race, and the intensity is through the roof. 
The mind and muscles are reaching peak exhaustion, but what hits them like a ton of bricks is the insane heat. The track is burning at around 122 degrees Fahrenheit, the tires are sizzling at 212 degrees, and the front brakes are practically on fire at 1,800 degrees. Now, let's talk about the driver's gear. Being inside the racing suit is like wearing a fireproof oven mitt, thick and hot. Inside the cockpit is like a sauna, reaching up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You're sweating buckets, probably losing about 3-5% to of your body weight. The driver's heart is pounding at 180 beats per minute for the whole race, and that's like 80% of what most people's hearts can handle. They're basically running a mental and physical marathon. To cope with all these challenges, drivers need to be super fit. Think less than 150 pounds and less than 12% body fat. If you're a heavier person with 200 pounds and 20% body fat, you'd struggle big time. Your focus and reaction speed would tank in those final laps, making a controlled finish impossible. It's a tricky situation as too much weight can slow a car down, but not enough weight can compromise the driver's safety. For the 23 season, the driver and car must weigh, together, a minimum of 1,754 pounds. To find that balance, drivers go through an extremely regulated diet, generally rich in fruits and vegetables. Whole grain complex carbohydrates, like oats, brown rice, and cereals, provide a sustained release of energy helping them stay on top of their game throughout each lap. The insane heat can also lead to dehydration, so drivers have this setup going from the side of the car's cockpit through the driver's helmet, where they can sip on drinks during the race. It's not always just water. Saline solutions and isotonic drinks are also an option. Well, it's time to hit the podium or not. But one thing's for sure, at this point, Drivers have to be ready for the next race, which is going to be in a whole different country. You have to be as adaptable as a pop superstar on a world tour to handle the different time zones, new cultures, and changing climates throughout a nine-month stretch. Jet lag can hit anyone hard, causing things like drowsiness, disorientation, and agitation. So, drivers use some tricks to dodge jet lag like slowly getting used to the new time zone before taking off by setting their clocks to the destination time. They're also aware of light, either by being exposed to it or by avoiding it. This way they can reset their internal clock, signaling to their brain and hormones when it's time to wake up or to sleep. The impact of flying all the time is also significant, and specialists call that travel fatigue. During the Formula One season, Teams spend roughly 10 full days, or 240 hours, on planes every year, zigzagging across multiple time zones. So even if you're not dealing with jet lag, the cumulative effect of frequent travel ramps up fatigue levels, making you feel tired, sad, and alone. Formula One is definitely not just about crazy speed and sophisticated cars. The driver's toughness, both physical and mental, also determines who comes out on top. Now, you tell me, do you have what it takes to be a Formula One driver? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.